Hello, hi, and welcome to episode number 28 of an Italian knitting podcast. My name is Francesca and I am an Italian knitter. It has been a month and a half, two months, since I last recorded and posted. I hope your end of 2023 was lovely, holidays went great, start of the new year was great. I hope the end of last year was good for you, that it was relaxing, that your holidays Hopefully you had some actual time off from like life obligations and you had some relaxing time for yourself. I hope the new year started positively for you. I think it did for me, so I'm, pre I'm pretty happy. We'll see how, how the rest of the year goes. And not surprisingly, this video will be like a regular, standard podcast episode, finished objects, works in progress and acquisitions. So let's start. What I'm wearing is also my first finished object and this is a Stockholm sweater by Petit Knit. I've started this almost a year ago and then I stopped knitting on it over the summer because n this girl doesn't want to touch more hair during the summer and the, the warm months and like I, 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 I swear I, my hands got like sweaty and sticky just by thinking about it so I started last year in the kind of the winter time, stopped knitting on it over the summer and picked it up, picked it back up quite recently and finished it up. It was almost done. I think I had like the yoke part done, the collar was done more or less. So I just had to finish the sleeves and the bottom ribbing, the body ribbing. I've used Filcolana Arveta and Filcolana Tilia in light truffle. I feel like I've mentioned this project in a lot of my past videos. So if you've been following for a while, I can picture you like doing like, yeah, you're done finally with that project. So yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you for cheering me on. And this project is a very classic looking sweater. I think it looks very polished. I don't love double folded collars in general to knit nor to wear nor to look at. Sometimes they feel quite like chunky and like a statement that sometimes I don't love. However, I think for a project who uses like DK weight yarn, this is like a fingering plus a mohair. So let's say like DK weight type of yarn. So not too thick. I, I guess I'm okay with a double folded collar. I would not do double folded collars with like a thicker yarn because then you have around your neck like double the thickness and sometimes that could be too too much if we're looking at like a very chunky sweater so i'm okay i guess with this double folded collar so i had finished this i think or knitted the collar last year so this time around when i picked up the project i was not gonna rip back the collar just because i wanted like a single layered collar but if i were to knit this again who knows if I would do a double folded. I don't know. I do like it, but I think it's a, it's a bit too much. What do you think? I don't know. I've asked you before this question. Um, the rest of the sweater, I think, is quite simple, like a simple construction. It has like one by one ribbing for the cuffs and the bottom hem. And I think I have only one note. And it's that I've knit this one in a size that it's a size smaller than what I usually go for in terms of petite knit patterns. And that's because I've read through the projects in Ravelry, like the project notes, and people were saying that this specific pattern wears quite like oversized. And so I went down one size in like compared to my regular petite knit size. If you are thinking about knitting the Stockholm sweater, Maybe go through the Ravelry projects and see if you like the fit or if you would also consider doing what I've done. The color is stunning. I, I love truffle in real life, like on like pasta or risotto or anything, to be honest. So maybe that's why I'm really into the light truffle. I'm getting hungry just by thinking about it, but I, I do like the color. It's like a muted gray slash brown so i think it's in between gray and brown which i like because it gives more interest to to the color i think also this is so soft i think it was my first time using uh, filcolana tilia which is the mohair in a project i've always just like felt it like felt it 
um, with my fingers on the ball of yarn and it felt very very soft but now wearing it I can confirm that what everyone says about Filcola Natilia being smooth and cozy and not itchy is confirmed. You have my approval. If you were thinking about Filcola Natilia for your next project, you should. <laughs> next up, not a garment, an accessory, I think. That's a category of blankets, right? It's a small, teeny tiny, not teeny tiny, but like toddler size blanket. This one was for my daughter or is for my daughter, but I gifted it to her for Christmas. And it's the most like fluffy, 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 cozy, purpley lavender colored square blanket. And I've knitted it in Katya Wow Fluffy. That's the name of the yarn. And the construction that I've used for this blanket is the same construction that you would do for the sweet shop blanket, as in like for one of the square that build up the sweet shop blanket, which I should show you. I, this won't even be in my in progress projects section because I've not done any progress recently. It has been just there on the side, but the construction of these giant square compared to the small one is still the same. You start from a corner, you increase, increase, increase towards up until I guess the diagonal and then you decrease towards a corner. And I've chosen this construction. So again, one corner, increase, increase towards the diagonal and then decrease towards the other corner. And that what it does for me is that you can use up the entire quantity of yarn that you have purchased because you can just finish increasing, like stop increasing when you're halfway through your yarn. So if you have two balls of yarn, when you're finished or almost finished with the first one, that's when you stop and that's when you attach the second ball and start decreasing. And in that way, you can kind of rest assured that you maximized the length of the blanket based on the yarn that you have, which is something that I do like. With blankets, I think the main struggle that I have is if I do like a typical construction, like rectangular, like cast on stitches at the bottom and then knit up until the yarn is done, I struggle with like knowing how many stitches to cast on at the beginning. You cast on some amount and then you start knitting and then you're like, you end up with like a shape for this blanket that's a little bit wonky. So sometimes you cast on not enough and it, you have like a super narrow blanket that's super long, or sometimes you do the opposite. So if you are, if you do like a square blanket, then I would say this construction works very well, works very well. My daughter really likes it. I had to steal it from her bed. It is a little bit messy, to be honest. Like the stitch definition is not a thing that you can achieve with this yarn. Like this yarn is not meant for stitch definition. So you can see like the, the fluffiness, the halo. Also like she plays with it. She like the cat, I'm assuming sometimes sits on this blanket. I don't even know, but like it's not super pretty polished, like it's more fluffy, as the yarn name says, than like sleek. But I think it's perfect for a blanket. I don't think I would uh, use this yarn for garment whatsoever. Like it's it's very, very chunky and a little bit plasticky. It has some artificial content. So that's why I said plasticky. I have a little teeny tiny bowl left. Maybe I can do a little scarf for one of my daughter's stuffed animals or something. Last item in the finished objects category is a pattern that doesn't exist yet. It exists only in my Google Doc drafts <laughs> and it's an Italian spring showlet. I haven't picked the official name, but it's Kind of the spring pattern in my seasonal collection of patterns. I have started in the summer with an Italian summer scarf and then an Italian autumn cowl, an Italian winter shawl and kind of the spring pattern as you can see 
it's kind of breezy and lightweight and I think I'm gonna be calling a shawlette. Is this a shawlette? Like a small shawl? I'm not sure but it's the spring pattern in my collection. If you allow me to call it that. Garter stitch, eyelets, my regular things that I love in patterns and accessories and just projects in general. This one you can wear, hmm, I think you can wear it as like a, a little scarf around your neck, you can wear it on your shoulders. I think that's how I originally intended. I feel like in the spring sometimes you have maybe like a dress or something on but you want to cover your shoulders a little bit more and so this allows you to do so. I don't know if it works very very well on top of a mohair sweater but I don't know maybe what do you think. This one, uh, my first sample I knitted up in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk and the colorway is Powder which is, I think, this like pretty grayish, brownish, pinkish, maybe not pinkish, but it is a bit of a weird color, if you do ask me. <laughs> I originally purchased this couple of skeins of yarn for a camisole. However, then the color didn't spring, the color didn't scream summer to me, which is where I typically wear my camisoles. It, it I don't know, it was a bit like, toned down for the summertime and so I was like oh I'll use it for like a very lightweight like spring accessory and I ended up using it for the spring shawlette. It's I think officially called like a shallow triangle shawl so it has quite like long it's quite long and not very deep so it's narrow words and you start from the bottom tip that you see there and then you increase 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 at quite like a fast rate so that you okay, shoot up and and you get this elongated shape which is very wide and i think it like works very well if you do have a couple of bowls of pure silk laying around because maybe you wanted to do a camisole but you change your mind, I think this is a great choice. I have another in progress Italian spring shawlette in more of a wooly finger weight yarn so that I guess would be kind of warmer and cozier but this one that I finished is, is very very breezy. I think this could bring you in the summer nights as well. I plan to publish the free pattern at the beginning of spring, which I think it's March, right? Like mid-March, end of March, you will be able to knit this too if you'd like. And that actually was a good transition to works in progress. I did mention that I do have an Italian spring cholette on the needles in a more woolly yarn. And of course it's mid-row. That's okay, right? I apologize for the mid-row. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's knitted flat. It, it kind of looks like a circle right now, but I promise you, it's knitted flat. See, it's not connected here. And this specific one that I'm knitting with more of a woolly yarn will be a little bit bigger because I want to try like how it looks like if you continue to knit and then stop when you're done with like a couple of hundred gram skeins or hundred grams balls of yarn and like give you more coverage and this pattern you'll see like you can stop whenever you'd like right with most triangle shawls that's how it works where you like you stop when you either are happy with the shape the size or you don't have yarn left so I'll just finish up this bowl. I think I have a little, a little teeny tiny mini bowl that I can add onto it, but we'll see. It'll become like a more, more, more coverage, cozier. I want to play with this. And this is the same yarn that I've used for my half and half blue wrap. And I had some more yarn left. Ooh, I have an end that I have not woven in, I'll do that. This is actually a gift for my mom. She has a birthday next month, so I'll wrap it up 
and gift it to her finally it has been sitting in my office for a while and I've been kind of squishing it here and there she doesn't mind she's my mom and I had a little not a little but like a good amount of yarn left over because I had acquired more than what I needed for the half and half and so it's it's perfectly suited for knitting like a triangle shawl that you can cast off whenever you're finished with your yarn so yeah I mean same one same same notes as the pure silk one that I showed you garter stitch eyelets narrow relaxing and not woven in the usual now on to a pastel dream that came true this is an in progress terrazzo sweater by petite knit with needles that are ticking and clicking and clunking so i apologize for that but it's a terrazzo sweater without its typical signature kind of turtleneck please ignore the ends but as you can see this is like a typical a crew neck is it called crew neck like it's a regular neckline although the pattern calls for like a turtleneck like folded like a big turtleneck i do not like turtlenecks no, not at all it's like a lot of like warmth and i don't know sometimes i feel like i'm choking a little bit it's probably because where i live in italy even in the winter time doesn't get like super super cold where i would need an extra layer around my neck especially indoors also i work from home so i don't really have to leave my house that much especially when it's very very cold so i don't have opportunity to really like enjoy and need like a folded like two layers around my neck so i modified the pattern for like a regular collar and we can talk about that a little bit this yarn is kind of like a dream yarn i've seen people talk about it and i also was dreaming about it until i was able to get my hands on this this is noro the one with a super long name it's silk garden sock silk garden sock solo i'm reading like my excuse is that i'm reading the name upside down what a mess i'm doing and this is the bowl that it's attached to my project and you can see it has like color variations they're quite quick so you have like maybe rows or rounds of one color and then it switches to a different pastel goodness and i'm holding this together with a mohair from Sannesgarn. this is tin silk mohair which is your regular silk mohair I guess they do have a chunkier thicker one but when you when you think about like a mohair strand this is like a regular lace weight strand even if it says thin it's regular i would say it's a like regular silk mohair but probably that doesn't sound very appealing so holding these two together to get the gauge that's good for this pattern and i think I'm sure actually this is the yarn that's used in the pattern and then you can hold it with a mohair strand and then you're good yeah and it was so very fun to knit with the what do I want to talk about first I guess I don't know like it, it's fun because you want to see what colors come up next Ooh, next round what color we come up with is it a bit of yellow a bit of purple a bit of pink light blue and it happened only once or twice where I didn't like the, the resulting effect. I think it was when I had like a couple of rounds or more, maybe they were, maybe a couple of rounds, they were quite dark. So I think they were in the front. I mean, I still do have quite like some kind of more like darker spots in the back, which I think kind of st stood up a little bit compared to the rest of the pastel -y goodness, but I think in the front is where I like focused more in terms of like making sure that everything was blended together and looked nicely and what I've done in a couple of places is that I took two strands of mohair and I did duplicate stitch on top of the the fabric so just to cover up like muddle down tone down a little bit some like darker stitches that I had in the front I just 
took like mohair held double with like in a in a needle like a sewing needle and I did duplicate stitch so that I would kind of put the two strands of mohair on top of the on top of the stitches these are the stitches right and so you kind of cover up the stitches with your yarn that's attached to the sewing needle and so you kind of get to tone down if you have like spots that are a little bit dark or you don't like it happened only once I think it was here but yeah it's just that I wanted it to be perfect because this yarn is quite expensive and like not super easy to get a hold of. What else? Um, I'm still kind of finishing up the sleeve and I will do a little bit more on this sleeve and then put it on hold and then block it. So soak it, block it, let it dry to see how much this yarn actually grows because I don't want it to be super, super long, to be honest. Like the original pattern is intended for like absolutely massively long sleeves that cover your hand almost. I don't want that. So I just want to stop a little bit, like not short, but like shorter than what the pattern suggests, but like a regular sleeve. So I need to keep an eye on the length. And yeah, the other kind of fairly interesting piece is that the collar. So I knew that I did not want to do the turtle neck. So I've tried a few things, okay. So first time I tried, I picked up stitches along the neckline and I did pick up the same amount of stitch stitches that was recommended in the pattern for the turtle neck. And I knit like a couple of centimeters and then bound off. That was, didn't look intended for my preferred color style because if you pick up the same amount of stitches that you would for a turtleneck then you have too many stitches because for a turtleneck you do want like a wide-ish collar that sticks up then you can fold down etc but if you pick up pick up those same amount of stitches and do like a shorter collar what happens then instead of laying flat it'll kind of shoot up this way a little bit so it kind of looked like a mock neck i think that's what you call it i don't have a picture unfortunately so rip that completely i picked up then less stitches typically i think in in other patterns i've seen to pick up like two thirds of the stitches along the edges here uh, the diagonal i guess edges and pick up one stitch per every stitch along the the back and the very front so i did that i think that worked very well but that time i did a double folded collar and i'll insert a picture and i think that's too thick of a collar for me this yarn is quite like a good sturdy not sturdy a, a chunky ish fabric chunky is not the right word but like it's quite heavy of a fabric. So if you fold it double, you have like a lot of heat, a lot of fabric, a lot of like warmth around your neck. So I didn't love it. And I think it also came out too tall. So maybe it would have looked good as a double folded collar, but I maybe if I had done it a little bit more narrow, like shorter, I don't know. But in the end, what it, what I didn't like was that it was quite chunky, quite tall and quite like close to my neck. So final attempt, which is what you see here, is a single layered collar, not folded. And I like it. I also intentionally made it narrow. So not very chunky, right? Like not very tall like this one. This is more subtle. I think it works well. I would still recommend that if you do like the terrazzo sweater pattern, you do it, like even if you don't want a turtleneck, but then just pay attention that you have to do some math, not math, but like some reasoning of how you'd like the collar to look like, because I, I mean, this is modifying the turtleneck, right? Like, so you need to put a little bit more attention. I also put an elastic thread through the cast off edge just so that I'm sure that it sits nicely around my neck and the cast off I actually did a long tail cast off which 
it's kind of matchy matchy with the long tail cast on in the sense that it, get, it gives you the same look and I've done it a few times before and it's very stretchy it's a sewn bind off so it, I think it looks very polished um, but it's also easy to frog like unravel so if you end up not liking the cast off like with the long tail cast off you can kind of fairly easily frog which is not I think true for Italian bind off or like some more complicated sewn bind off so I don't know I do like this I'll leave a link down below if you want to follow the same tutorial that I followed but yeah I'll, I'll try this on for you of course I apologize for the tick 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 that you'll hear probably but I'm kind of a lazy I didn't put things on hold before filming this, this podcast but yeah this is how the color modified single layered color looks like on the terrazzo sweater and I mean the sleeves I don't know so armholes are quite deep which I don't mind I do like having some some room I wonder how the kind of um, shoulder fit will change after I block it I'm sure it will relax I'm interested to see if it'll kind of change shape a little bit here and yeah it'll, it'll have the same twisted rib ribbing on the cuffs and the bottom ribbing as well and yeah I'm looking forward to have it finished again this is like I think the maximum thickness that I can have in a sweater like a comfortable sweater that I can wear easily and yeah I mean it, it feels chunky to me in my wardrobe it's not chunky in general they're like much chunkier garments that I've seen people that look sque squishy and lovely but those would be I think too warm for me so this is a good like chunky enough fabric for me and I'm excited to wear it over the winter it, it, it's so fun it, it's a, probably a sweater that I would not wear like every day I don't know if it'll be as easy to throw on as if you were looking at like a one color sweater this is a little bit more fun so I'm interested to see if I'll reach for it maybe if it's a very gloomy day outside I will want to wear something kind of fun and bright and pastely we'll see yeah I will not keep it on just for the sake of your ears so I'll change back into the Stockholm sweater but we only have acquisitions to go through now cool done that concludes finished objects and, and works in progress the only thing remaining for me to show you if you'd like to stick around is acquisitions I have a good amount of things and if you are stopping the video now closing the video now I thank you for your time and the acquisition section is actually quite lengthy because I have acquired some yarns specifically Italian brands that I'd like to send along with my husband on his work trip that is going on next week and he has a co-worker who is a knitter and she's based in California and so I collected a few Italian yarns and I'll drop them up in a nice package and send this package with my husband on his work trip so that his co-worker can enjoy the Italian yarn I actually don't know her at all um, as in like I've not I don't even know if she likes the colors that I picked for her I hope so but I don't know I feel like they just I wanted to send some souvenir to her knitters gotta stick together so I'll show you what I got and of course while I was buying things for her I could not pass the opportunity to get something for me too oh. I'll go in no particular order but the first thing that will be in her package is Le Wolle Nocciole I used this for my Monday sweater by Petit Knit this is quite like a cropped-ish version of the Monday sweater but it's so soft very very soft this is 75% wool and 25 angora super soft the color selection of this yarn is stunning other than the green and this super lovely blue there's like a pumpkin orange 
that it's stunning and I think you'll have to be in my future for a garment. So this will go to her. I think I'm suggesting like maybe like a scarf or a hat. This should be good enough. And then I have a couple of skeins of an Italian hand dyed yarn, which is called Dark Omen. I originally thought about gifting this to her and keeping this for myself, but I've not made a final, final decision. So we'll see how I have time until tomorrow morning <laughs> to make this decision. But yeah, this is a sport weight yarn. It's called Dynasty by Dark Omen. And I've actually just recorded a video about Italian brands and Italian yarns with like a few recommendations. If you ever were to come to Italy to visit Italy or visit me, <laughs> uh, then that could be maybe a guide for you to know what like yarn to pick up in store as souvenirs to rest assured that you are picking like an Italian proper souvenir from Italy. So this is an example that of the yarn that it's in that video. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is a sport weight yarn, which it's not a, a weight of yarn that I find super commonly. So I love actually sport weight yarn for like hats or like accessories as well. So, and last, but definitely not least, especially in terms of money spent is Cardiff cashmere. So I have a couple of bowls which I think will go to my husband's co-worker, but I also have a full sweater quantity of Cardiff Cashmere Classic. This is also the classic version, which is the sport weight, another sport weight um, version of their 100% cashmere yarn. And fun fact, or like not super fun fact, but like maybe interesting fact is that I actually wanted to order a sweater quantity in the brown and I wanted to get a couple of bowls of this kind of soft blue uh, as a gift for my husband's co-worker. I just, when I was ordering, I was slightly in a rush because I had to leave the house and I just didn't double check that I put like the correct quantity with the correct colorway. <laughs> so I received the opposite of what I thought I ordered. So I received what I ordered. So there was no mistake from the website that I ordered this from. But anyway, in hindsight, after thinking about things a little bit, I actually do love this color in a sweater too. Like I think I was seeing this more, more for like accessories, like a, a hat, like a little shawl, little scarf, but I mean, I am happy to keep this and knit garment with it. I'm leaning towards a poppy tee by Petit Knit, but making it with more positive ease. So maybe knitting a size up and also with long sleeves. So I don't know, this is so soft. You've seen people talking about this yarn and kind of saying, oh, it's so soft, but it truly is. It's also very expensive. I've stayed away from Cardiff Cashmere for the past years, try not to fall into the trap of this beauty. But yeah, with the excuse to order yarn to send with my husband, I had to buy some for me, right? And I guess in hindsight also the brown, so the Sudan is somewhat in the same color family of the Stockholm sweater that I just finished. So maybe it's a good thing that I didn't get a sweater quantity of the brown because then it would be quite similar. I don't know. I'm trying to convince myself, but yeah, I don't know. I do like the soft, the soft blue in the end. So I don't know if it goes well with my colors, my skin color and hair color, but I'll do it. I'll knit the, the sweater and thoroughly enjoy the process and probably the wearing of the sweater too. And that was it, my friends. We got through everything that I wanted to show you. Thank you.